Hey all, another video, and today we're going to have one of the most frequently asked questions of sim racing about around the field of view. And you can already see we got to do some measuring, of course, to feed a FOV calculator. I'm going to jump ahead here and say I'm certainly not using what the calculator is turning out for me because there are a couple more arguments to make in sim racing, and that's what the video is going to be for. So let's start with what my current settings are. So a C easy to access SK view settings and we're right there. Um, so the field of view is 41 degrees. I adjusted the distance to the wheel a bit to sit a bit deeper inside the car, um, adjusted the height a bit, um, nothing major. And what I want to achieve is what you can't see here in that view because of course it crops a lot of the image. So I'm going to have bring up a shot real right after this uh, to show my actual screen. Um, so I can see the sides of the car as well, or rather the windows and the mirror. So I get some perception of what is happening next to me. So now you can see my uh, actual screen, what I am seeing. So we have the A pillar on the right. It's still there. We have the A pillar, not quite on the left. We have the mirror and of course, big amount of dashboard. But the important thing is I really hear that part where I'm able to see outside the window and really get a feeling for uh, what is happening besides me. Because if I were to go and take the correct field of view and I have my insane measuring device here, which accidentally just uh, fits quite nicely. So I'm just poking my eye here while touching the screen. That makes it 62 uh, centimeters. And that means the FOV calculators will come up with a way different field of view that is 30.4. So if we just go forward with that, you can see the difference it makes. I would need to move the distance way further back and now have quite the different uh, feeling for the car because now all the sizes are a bit different. Of course, you can, you can use that. It doesn't look entirely wrong or something, but I think and that's what I wanted to show, is there are more effects of field of view than just uh, having the correct kind of sizes of everything and um, ratios or whatever. The thing now is that maybe we have to speak a little more general here, um, that of course less of the virtual world will be visible on the screen, both horizontally and vertically. Which means every movement the car makes in that world is going to cause more movement of the virtual world around me. Okay, so, and what this means, and just to exaggerate this a bit and to really make it perceivable, we're going to make the field of view even narrow as if we're sitting further away or something. Let's just go to 25, even 25 is already quite a big change. So now every degree the car rotates brings up a lot of pixels from the right side to the left side. Of course, if we go the other direction, they're coming from here. But the real or the virtual world now is flying past me at much higher speed. This also allows me to, if we just do, just do very tiny movements on the steering wheel here, right? We, we can see a lot of the world moving in front of us if we already do a bit of rotation in the car. This means you will be able to perceive finer details in the car's movement and the car's rotation. So um, let's say the car rotates with 10 degree a second or something. It will mean that a lot of pixels in these 10 degrees per second will fly from one side to the other. And that gives you a very good feeling for the car's rotation. Also, if the car's rotation changes, which constantly happens in the corner, you will be able to tell more easily that something about the car has changed and that you as a driver need to do something. So if you just tap the brake, the car will respond, right? So we're rotating here, tap the brake, rotates into the turn, right? And you can see those differences pretty good with a very low field of view. The other problem is whenever you go over a bump or something and you're not filtering it out, 
then also the the car is going to jump wildly up and down and it can be just a bit distracting for your driving also every corners look incredibly tight you can't really see ahead you can't see the exits of the corner so there is a downside to that as well and the other bit is that the perception of speed now how things in the distance arrive towards me um, that also suffers a bit because now we basically are only able to perceive rotation but not so much the speed we are carrying we can hardly see what is coming towards us uh, next so if we turn this around and go to a really high field of view instead so let's just say 60 degrees or something then you will see now the rotation seems very little right it takes forever for something from the side of the screen move over to the other side and uh, but in turn we can see a long way into the distance and see what is coming left and right and what's going to be after the corner before we are even there right so here it's much easier now to already see we can already see the next corner up there coming towards us which was entirely invisible before now we have a good perception of the speed and how things are fl flying towards us but we don't have as much detail anymore in the car's rotation which you can see when i'm going quite aggressively here left and right on the steering wheel very little is actually happening in terms of how many pixels move from left to the right just give you that contrast once more let's remove the field of view or just go very low here do the same slalom and you'll see how much of the screen is ro okay and i'm immediately confused actually what the car is doing because you are so used to the field of view you are actually using and that kind of means how you are judging how the car is rotating how much rotation is too much how little is too little and um, when you need to step in as a driver to actually count a steer that right now I'm pretty puzzled how much rotation is the rotation the car can do and how much rotation is already oversteering so of course you can get used to that and um, you'll certainly be able to do fast times with that as well that all doesn't really matter I'm just trying to highlight these differences and whatever you choose for you I think is going to be fine and why I chose my particular field of view which then is the the 41 we started the video with at the distance why I just see the mirror on the left side is that I'm just kind of doing a compromise of all the things that I spoke about now I'll be able to perceive the car's rotation quite well Okay, there's enough going from left to right. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I can see a little ahead, even if the corner has like 90 degrees like this one, I can still see something that's happening ahead, like a car being sideways or something or being parked in my way. I can still watch out of the left side window there to get a feeling for what is happening next to me, how much space I still have in battle for position. And that's why I feel a very narrow field of view might be detrimental because you kind of might give you more perception of the car's rotation and a little more refined feeling for that. And you might step in early and keep the car on the right amount of rotation all the time, but you might miss out on the car that is driving next to you and might have cord contact, right? So I'm just saying you don't take field of view as religious correct and wrong there are more aspects to it like the perception of speed the perception of rotation and of course what you see around you i think what i want to say here is don't take the whole field of view topic too serious there's something that makes sense for your situation most likely the calculator can give you a good hint but it's most certainly not going to be enough to create a situation, a view situation, where you have the best of all worlds, where you perceive enough of the rotation, where you perceive enough of the speed, where you potentially see enough around you to actually be able to race with other people without having permanent contact, simply because you don't know they are there or where they are exactly or if they're moving towards you or away from you. Um, so I feel like a lot of valid points in this field of view situation are kind of being ignored um, and therefore 
Find something that works for you. Maybe start off with an FUV calculator to give a rough idea of what would be correct. And then kind of go away from that until you find something that suits your needs. Because when I started sim racing, we didn't have wide screens, let alone we had triple screen setups or something. It was more something like this with a one to one aspect ratio and 21 inch at best. That was the later times. And, of, and we were driving something like 90 degrees feet of view just to be able to see something around us in the first place. So, yeah, again, don't take it too serious. Take this as a start. Don't let anybody tell you that you need to have a certain calculated field of view. Something is correct and something else isn't. Just find what works for you. You have a monitor with a certain aspect ratio, with a certain amount of pixels, with a certain distance towards where you're sitting but you still need to be able to see what's happening left and right of you. You still need to be able to see how fast you're going and you still need to get a feeling for how fast the car is rotating to judge whether or not there's more rotation to have or if you're already over rotating, you should actually counter steer. So taking all this into account, that's a sweet spot for everyone's situation. So don't just follow the math. <laughs>